What's going on you guys? Uh, it's been a little while since I've done a tutorial on this channel, but I wanted to come back and give you something that has really, really helped us out. Um, you might have seen in my last few videos us wearing the in-ear monitors when we were playing. Um, it's because we were using two very important things. I'm going to jump right into what these are here in a few minutes, but first I want to shout out a few guys who have given me a lot of the knowledge I've learned about Ableton Live and just in-ears and stuff like that. I want to shout out Daniel Bernard. I want to shout out Will Doggett of From Studio to Stage. And most importantly, John Mike. I've got a lot of his videos saved where he gives tutorials like this. So thank you guys. I know you're probably never ever gonna see this, but thank you guys for all the help you've given me for this. And uh, I'll link all their channels in the description so you can go subscribe to them. Please go subscribe to them. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this tutorial. So let's do it right now, here we go. The first thing I want to introduce you guys to is the Behringer Xenix 502. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce that word right there. Behringer Xenix 502. What this is, it's kind of like a very, very scaled down mixing console that you can run sound into and get sound out of it. It's just basically the Behringer X32, but just very, very downsized. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like if you can run audio in and then get audio out and split it and everything, I feel like it counts as a mixing console. So that's the Behringer Xenix 502. This is kind of like the main hub of what we're doing here. This is how we're gonna get all our audio in and into here. This is the next thing I'm gonna show you. This is a headphone app. I think it's pronounced Fifen, the Fifen Technology N6. Behringer has something like this as well, but I could not really find what I was looking for on Amazon. So I got this instead and it works perfectly. It works just fine. So this is the Fifen N6 headphone app. Now a little bit more about this mixer here. It's got a mic input, a mic preamp, so you can even plug in a talkback mic there. Yeah, you heard me right, a talkback mic. The one you see on your gospel music videos where when they finally give the band some camera time in front of the keyboardist or the MD or whoever, you might see a mic. Chances are that's not plugged up so that they can sing into it. That's plugged in so that they can communicate with their band and that it goes only to their in-ears and not out to the house. So I'm gonna jump into how you can do all of these things that I just talked about in a second, all right? So let's do that right now. So I wanna talk about channel one real quick. This is the mic channel. You can see it's got that XLR input right there. Some of the controls, they give you some nice EQ control, your highs, your lows. You can pan it to the right and to the left. And here's the thing you wanna do. If you're trying to make it a talk back mic, one thing you wanna do is pan it all the way to the left so that if you're running out of main output right, it does not go out to the house. All right, of course, you got your level control here where you can turn it up and down. And they'll even let you know if it's clipping or too loud. So there's channel one. Line in two, three, and line in four, five. That's where you can plug things into. So for example, I might put tracks left and right into line in two and three. I might split my click guide, my click and guide, and my tracks that way. And then um, in lines four or five, I might run in some keys or whatever. All right. And then to the right of those, you got main output left and right. That's what's going to send all the audio that you put in these three channels here to wherever. Same thing for main output right. This is just kind of your headphone input if you want to listen straight from there. But we won't really be using that in this demonstration. This is how we're going to mostly get out of get our audio. We're not going to be plugging headphones into the phones. Uh, place on the Behringer Xenix. Now we're going to be plugging into this headphone amp here. You see we got an input and then four headphone outputs where you can plug in headphones or in-ears or what have you, whatever you'll be using to monitor with. Even if that's, even if you're going to plug into like a floor wedge or whatever, but you don't want to do that with what I'm going to demonstrate with you all today. So I'm going to give you examples of how you can run lines in and take lines out of this mixer right here. So here we go. Okay, you guys, what you're looking at right now is my Ableton Live screen. I'm running tracks for Chasing After You. These are some tracks I made myself. Uh, I'll be using those for this example. I'm going to show you what you need to do within this program to run tracks accurately and split the click and the guide from the tracks 
so you can run them into a mixer and run them out to the house and get clicking tracks back in your ears. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how uh, Chasing After You sounds real quick so you get a feel for how it sounds. Here I got the click track and a guide in there. All right, so that's how it sounds. Wanted to give you a feel for that. So um, let's review our tracks real quick. I'm gonna switch to session view. I got my click track and my guide. And if you've seen any video, like any tutorial video about how to run tracks in a worship setting or whatever, you know that if you have tracks like these, a click, a guide, cues, whatever you might call it, these are not supposed to go to the house where everyone can hear them. Am I right? These should only go to in-ear monitors or your drummer or your worship leader or your MD or whoever you're running a set of in-ears to. The point is, wherever they go, it should not be a situation to where everybody can hear it. So I'm going to show you what you can do to kind of split them so that only tracks go to the house and no click goes to the house, just the inners, all right? So it might be a little complicated. I'm gonna try my best to explain it clearly, so bear with me here. So I got my click and my guide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these by holding down shift while click track is selected and press guide. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, you see how down here it says audio two and master? I'm gonna select master and instead of saying master, I'm gonna select external out. That basically means it's not going to the main place, it's going to wherever else you send it. So if you have an audio interface or something like that, you can send it to whatever output you choose, whether it's one, two, three, four, however many outs your uh, audio interface offers. So I'm running out of the headphone jack, so I've only got two, left side and right side. So it's, it says that it's going to both the left and the right right now. One and two, one means left, two means right in this case. We don't want that, all right? We only want it to run one way, and that one way is to our in-ear monitors. We want the click track and the guide to stay out of the house. We don't want the congregation hearing that like us musicians do. I know we like it, but they don't. So we're going to change one and two only to say one. Or you can change it to say two depending on, depending on how you want them to route. I usually like to keep my click and guide on the left. That's just me. I've only seen people do left, so I'm going to change them to one. Okay, everything else here, our loop, our effects, bass, every other stem that's here, we want to select the first one that's not a click track or a guide. We want to hold down shift and select the very last track. We're going to send audio to, not to the master, but we're going to send that to external out as well. Let me show you a few options what you can do. You could say for it to run only to two, which is the right side. But the thing is, what I like to do, I like to hear the click, the guide, and the stems so I can kind of get a feel for where I'm at. So you could completely split them to where you can only hear click and guide and not the tracks, or you could do a we do and take them to one and two. So those of us with in areas, we can hear the click guide and tracks. That's just something that I prefer. I like to hear where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? So we're sending both of these to two. And just in case it's a little thing right here, Ableton Live has their own click track. If you want to send that away from the away from the main master to where congregation doesn't hear that, it's simple. Go over here to queue out in session view. Just change queue out from one and two to one. That way it's going the same exact way as the real click track and guide are. So that's just an interesting little thing if you don't want to use a click track that you put in yourself. All right. Now, as for master out, we want to send master out to two. That means the right side. So our click track is going to one. Our clicking guide is going to one. All of our other stems are going to one and two, but so that the congregation or whoever else is standing out there who's not in the band or on stage does not hear clicking guide or any other thing that's supposed to go to in ears only, you want to send that to two. That way only stems and tracks are coming out. So that's how you would do this within Ableton. And you can see that when you get back to arrangement view here, they kind of show you how you have your tracks routed. So you might hear a difference in how this sounds. I'm going to play it from where we were. I think the chorus. So we're gonna start right here at this course, and you'll you'll hear a difference. You should only hear clicking guide coming out of the left side. Let me start a little bit backwards. You notice how I only hear click track, Ableton Live's click, my own click track, and that guide that just happened. It's only coming out of the left side, and all my tracks are coming out of both sides. 
All right, so that's how you would do that in Ableton Live. So now that we got all our routing within our program figured out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to the mixer so I can show you how you can route all that out to the mixer and get tracks out to the house and click and guide only to your in-ears. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, our audio is routed. So what I'm gonna do now is show you some cables that you're gonna need to make this setup work. So you got a few options as to how you're gonna take sound out of the laptop to your, uh, to your uh, mixer right here. So here's option number one. You can use this splitter cable that you hear a lot of people talking about where it's got uh, an eighth inch, which you will plug into your laptop right there. So I'm gonna do that now. You got the eighth inch in that'll plug right into your laptop. You got these, th this dual quarter inch thing where the black is the left side, this is the tip side, and your right is the red side or the ring side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my left side, plug it into line two and three, plug black into left and red into right. And here in a minute, of course, I'm gonna show you how it sounds using my iRig. So that's, that's what's gonna plug in there. And you're going to hear, I'm going to run really quick. I'm going to take just a standard quarter inch cable and I'm going to run main output left into my headphone amp. So I just plugged that quarter inch in the main output left. Sorry about those cables in the way. And that main output is going to go into the input of my headphone amp right here. All right, so let me recap that really quick. I plugged in my left side of my laptop. This is the cable that I just plugged into the mixer. The left side went to line in two and three left. You can see that L right there. And the right side went into the right, the right side. All right, and then just to test it really quick, I took just a standard quarter inch cable, just a normal instrument cable, took it out of main output left or just main out left, and I sent that to the input of my headphone amp. Now I'm gonna show you really quick how it kind of sounds. I'm gonna monitor it myself, then I'm gonna use my iRig too so you guys can hear how it sounds. Bear in mind that on the left side should carry click, click track guide and the tracks, I almost said click guide again, don't wanna do that. The left side should carry click track, guide and tracks. So I'm about to show you how that sounds right now. Here we go. Alright, so you see how when that mix you just heard, see I had the uh, I had my in-ears plugged into two and I had my iRig plugged into one, they're both turned up at the same level, so we can hear the same thing. But with that mix you just heard coming out of main output left, you heard not only the click track and the guide cues, but you heard the stems in there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to switch it from main output left to main output right. That means that the left side is no longer coming out of the mixer, the right side is. That means I should only hear stems, no click, no guide, just stems, all right? So that means the right side is what's now being sent to the mixer, so I'm going to demonstrate that for you guys now. We should hear no click, no guide, just stems. So let's check that out right now. All right, so you see with that demonstration I just showed you, you can see that the click track and the guide were enabled. I did not turn them off, they were on. 
But you see, the reason why you didn't hear it, and I know I said this 100,000 times, but I need you guys to really understand, they're really split off, so you never have to worry about your click making it out to the house. It will not happen as long as you set it up correctly, all right? I really hope I explained this clear enough for you guys. This is something that's really benefited us. We've had problems, people saying it's kind of too loud, and then when we were turned down, we, now we can't hear ourselves. So with this in-ear monitor system, we really feel like it can benefit a lot of people. It's portable, it's simple, it's real cheap. I link everything that I'm using in this video, I think except for the laptop, to that I used in this description so that you guys can see exactly what I use and you can pick it up for yourselves. There's one thing I forgot. I did forget that you can also use something like this to split out your signal. It works the exact same way. The only difference is you would have to get two more quarter inch cables. So the reason why they're so similar, you see, they both got the red and black. So all you, have, all you would have to do is take a quarter inch cable. These are both these are both quarter inch females. So you would have to take a quarter inch cable out of each one of these outs if you want to make it to the mixer. It's real simple. Just plug the eighth inch side, the eighth inch male side into your laptop and it works the exact same way. Just take a quarter inch cable from the black side, plug it into where this cable is right now. You would just plug that into where this cable is right now. Same thing with the red. Take a quarter inch out of there, plug it in right to where the right side is now. That's actually the method that I've been using, mostly because this cable is only three feet. It's kind of too short. So that's the method I've been using. I really like it to where like they don't really know each other. Like they, they're completely split off. So there's no chance of it unless I route it incorrectly. There's no chance of click or guy making it out to the house. So I really want to thank you guys for watching today. Um, I really, really hope this video helps somebody out. Somebody in a really small church that can't afford, you know, a thousand dollar or three thousand dollar in your monitor system. Everybody's on wireless packs. Thank you guys for watching, man. And uh, please give this video a like, man. You know how we do. Hit the like button, the comment button, the subscribe button, especially that last one. Really thank you guys for hanging out today. Thank you so much for the support. And uh, God bless, man. Uh, and I hope you all had a great new year, too. All right. Next time.